Assalamu alaikum. Uh, good morning, dear students. Uh, I'm Dr. Parvez Ahmed. Uh, today's lecture is a part of our course, Introduction to uh, Nanoscience and Nanotechnology. So, uh, the questions that we have are our mind that what is nanotechnology? So, you know that uh, there are many definitions for uh, uh, the term nanotechnology. Uh, it varies from person to persons, from uh, community to community. The community I'm talking about is scientific community. Uh, but uh, some of the definitions uh, which are, are most widely accepted around the globe are characterized uh, as one, two, three here in these lectures. Uh, so according to the first well-known definitions, uh, what is nanotechnology? Uh, so we have uh, it's a research and technology development at the atomic, molecular, or macromolecular levels and the length scales of approximately one to 100 nanometer range. And this is the most widely accepted definitions for the nanotechnology. Uh, we can also have a definition like uh, it's a science where we are creating and using structures, uh, devices, and systems that have novel properties and function because of their small and intermediate size. Uh, so this is the second most uh, uh, widely used definitions for the nanotechnology. In addition to that, we can also have uh, uh, like, uh, uh, what is nanotechnology? We say that it's the ability to control or manipulate on the atomic scale. I mean, it's, it's the science and it's the technology uh, where we have the abilities to control our manipulates on the atomic scales. So uh, the next, uh, the most popular question or the most well-known question is, what are the materials of the nanotech? I mean, what are the materials that we study uh, inside the nanotechnology? So uh, basically those materials uh, which exist at nanotechnology are we study in nanotechnology we call them nanostructures so what are those nanostructures and what are their uh, what, or what what are their size range and uh, what is uh, what are the examples of those material so in nano nanostructures uh, we have cluster uh, we have nanocrystals we have quantum dye so these kind of materials they have radius in a range of 1 to 10 nanometers and there are practical examples. Uh, uh, it, 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 they, they are insulators, uh, semiconductors, metals, and magnetic materials. Uh, these are the, uh, the example of these materials, nanostructured materials, which including cluster, nanocrystals, uh, quantum dark. Uh, we also have other uh, nanostructures that we call uh, nanoparticles. So nanoparticles, it has a typical radius per one to 100 nanometers. And these nanoparticles, uh, they can be ceramic oxide and bulky ball. Uh, nanowires, so nanowires has a diameters from one to 100 nanometers, and they can be metals, semiconductors, oxide, sulfide, and nitride. I mean, uh, uh, semiconductors like we have uh, boron nitride and some other materials. Uh, I mean, they're, they're well known example of that. But uh, I mean, so we can also have uh, nanowires of different materials that can be metal, semiconductor, oxide, sulfide, nitride. Uh, nanotube, again, nanotube have diameters from 1 to 100 nanometers. Uh, and those uh, nanotubes can be of carbon, uh, including tolerance, a layer, uh, chalagodonide, and uh, 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 boron nitride nanotube and some other materials. I mean, so here we have just, uh, uh, I mean, give an example of very few material due to the time restrictions. So, nanotechnology. What makes the technology at nanoscale different from technology at the micro scale? I mean, this is the most widely questions. Uh, in other words, we can say why nanotechnology? Are, we can also ask the questions, how do property changes at the nanoscales? I mean, these are the questions that normally people have when they first come enter in the field of nanotechnology. So in the coming lecture, in the coming slide, we will uh, have to have a brief look on some of the, uh, I mean, some of the concepts to answer these questions. Why nanotechnology are, 
what makes the technology at nanoscale different from the technology at the macro scale uh, how do properties changes at a nanoscale so in the coming slide we will try you will best to answer these questions so property of materials what is the property first to answer the question what is the property so a property describe how a material acts under certain conditions you have a materials and you want to check that material that how it behaves under different conditions so that response of material and uh, response to uh, a particular conditions we call that it is uh, the property of that particular material so what kind of properties we have uh, i mean the most well-known properties uh, well-known types of the properties are optical properties uh, that included color and transparency etc uh, we have electrical properties, electrical properties, I mean, a good example of electrical properties are conductivity, resistivity, uh, and so on. Uh, physical properties, uh, the example of physical properties are hardness, uh, melting point, etc. Uh, chemical, uh, chemical properties, uh, for example, uh, reactivity, reaction rate, uh, and so on. So, uh, what actually we have, we have to study uh, properties uh, usually by looking at the range, uh, uh, by looking at, at a large uh, aggregations of the atoms or molecules. I mean, at nanotechnology, we are studying the aggregates of atom or molecule. I mean, that is a sample concept, and we have to look upon the properties. The well known properties we discuss. Uh, it should be optical, electrical, physical, uh, and chemical properties. Along with that, we have so many other properties. Uh, but uh, again, uh, if we have time, we can discuss about that more and more details. So first, have a look uh, at a good example of the optical properties uh, that we have. Uh, for example, if we have the material gold, so a bulk gold, a fair yellow, and color, like you can see it here. Uh, we have bulk gold and uh, look like yellow when it's in bulk size i mean when it's not in the nanoscale range so it look yellow but when we transform when we reduce the size from bulk to a nano so what happened uh, so along with the reduction of size uh, the nano size could appear red in the color that you can see it here i mean we have the bulk so it's look yellow but when we reduce the size into the nano range, so gold appear red in the color. The particles are so small. I mean, what happened at the nanoscale range? I mean, that we see, uh, we observe change in the color. So the particles are so small. You say the particles are so small that the electrons are not free to move about as in bulk gold. I mean, in bulk gold, we have its yellow color. Why? Because here the particles, the electrons are free to move about. So that's why we have a color like yellow. But here we say in the diamond scale range, the particles are so small that electrons are not free to move out as we have in, in the bulk gold. So because of this moment, uh, and because of this restricted moment of the electron, uh, the particles react differently with light. I mean, the change in color that is from yellow to red uh, is because of the restricted moment of the electron. I mean, uh, due to restriction on the electron, uh, we observe uh, we observe the change in color of the material. Um, one very practical example of the optical property is uh, that of the material zinc oxide. So, if you have a large number of zinc oxide particle, so uh, you know, it's a good example uh, that uh, zeno black. Uh, ultraviolet light why is light uh, it's, uh, ultraviolet light is blocked by the zinc oxide particle uh, that is why it's mostly used in the uh, cosmetics people using it uh, particularly for that purpose to block the ultraviolet light uh, it scatter the visible light uh, due to which it's a fair yellow uh, and that's why in the cosmetic it's being used uh, for this particular purpose uh, that one can uh, I mean, is something like whitening cream is being used uh, for that particular purpose, especially by the females. Uh, so, if you reduce the size of the zinc size uh, of the zinc oxide, that is, you make nano size particles of the zinc oxide. Uh, so, what it have? 
again it can and can block the ultraviolet light uh, so small compared to the wavelength of visible light uh, that they don't scatter it here we say that if you have a zinc oxide so zinc oxide and bulk it scatter visible light here we are saying that uh, in bulk side it scatter the visible light but here uh, if you have the nano side uh, zinc oxide so in nano side we say it's so small uh, to the wavelength of the visible light that that don't scatter it I mean the wavelength of the visible light we say is range from 7 uh, almost 700 nanometer to uh, approximately 400 nanometer so that wavelength is quite big uh, as compared with that wavelength we say that the small of the nano size materials uh, is so small uh, to that of the visible light so that's why we are saying that uh, in nano size they don't scatter the light uh, they, uh, they don't scatter the visible radiation so as a result of that as a result of that uh, zinc oxide particle they appear clear I mean if you want to look clear I mean it's up to you now uh, you go to a beautician uh, you want to have a macro for yourself you want to buy a cosmetic so you have to look upon the constituent of that material that, uh, that, that we call a zinc oxide you want to appear blood uh, you want to appear you want to look white so you have to uh, buy uh, the constituent and bulb but if you want to appear clear so in that particular conditions you have to buy the constituent of the product at a nanoscale range you want to study more so is the length of uh, the resources uh, from which we have taken the lectures so uh, you can uh, find more and more here uh, what about the electrical properties what are the good example of the electrical properties the electrical properties mostly we refer to the conductivity uh, and the conductivity uh, we check it normally for uh, I mean we give the example of the nanotubes so what are the nanotubes uh, uh, nanotubes are uh, uh, you can see it here in the in the figures uh, these all they are uh, different kind of nanotubes so multi wall it's exit armchair carol I mean in the coming course we will study in more detail about uh, these kind of the uh, uh, these different kind of nanotubes so what are nanotubes nanotubes uh, we have definition for the nanotubes nanotubes are long thin cylind cylinder of the carbons uh, if we say they are nanotubes uh, I mean uh, we say they are uh, stronger uh, electrical properties are uh, um, mechanical properties so uh, they are 100 times stronger than the steel uh, very flexible and have unique electrical properties uh, but uh, there is something very strange about uh, the nanotube especially about the carbon nanotube we are taking the example of carbon nanotube so their electrical properties change with the diameter that is if you want to twist so uh, uh, their electrical properties will switch I mean in other sense we say that the electrical properties of the carbon data tube uh, I mean it changes if you uh, can change the diameter if you change the diameter so a conducting nanotube can be switched to uh, a semiconductor data tube but it's very from uh, type of uh, the materials uh, as compared with that if you have boron or tri nanotube so it has the similar strength like carbon nanotube but you cannot uh, cannot switch the properties especially the electrical properties I mean so unlike carbon the boron nitride data tubes a large band, uh, band gap semiconductors and in that particular case we say the the properties the electrical properties that are dependent on helicity or diameter I mean if you uh, uh, if you twist them so you cannot change the property so uh, what actually we have about us uh, uh, the carbon uh, nanotubes that we call CNTs so they can be better either conductor or semiconductors and their electrical behaviors so they are conducting and semiconductor behaviors it depend upon uh, the diameters I mean if you can change the diameter so you can switch the behavior of the carbon nanotubes from conductor to semiconductor I mean the electrical properties uh, of the carbon nanotube is uh, switchable between uh, conductor and semiconductors what about physical properties two physical properties changes or it remain the same I mean just like we mentioned about the uh, 
the electrical properties we say is changed so what about the physical properties so a, a good example of the physical property is a melting point uh, so what is a melting point uh, we have microscopic definitions for the melting point and that macroscopic definition is uh, it's a temperature uh, at which the atoms ions or molecule and its substance have an energy to overcome the intermolecular force the intermolecular forces that hold them in a fixed positions and a solid i mean simply the, the main concept of temperature is uh, that we have uh, we are saying that it's the temperature of atom ion and molecule in a particular substance where it has added energy to overcome the intermolecular forces that hold them and affects positions and a solid. So what happened to this? If you uh, reduce the size of the materials or you bring the material from bulk to nano, so at nano uh, surface atoms, uh, we say that majority of the atom uh, and nanomaterial majority of the atom they are at the surface. I mean, we say that uh, a good property of the nanomaterial are they have large surface to volume ratio. Or uh, we say that uh, uh, a majority of the atom they are at the surface. So surface atom require less energy to move because they are in contact with the uh, fewer atom of the substance. I mean, uh, like you can see it here uh, that uh, you can observe this particular atom. We say that surface atom require less energy to move why because they are in contact with fewer atom of the substance so how is it like that here we have the materials uh, there are different atoms in this particular materials so we said this particular atom is lying at the surface so here you can see that uh, it's only in contact with the three atom it's in contact with the three atom the first one the second one is third one so what about this I mean, we have, we have chosen an atom from inside of that material. So what about this? So here you can see that this particular atom, it is in contact with the seven atoms. I mean, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seven atom. So this is why we say that surface atom require less energy to move because they are in contact with the fewer atom of the of the substance. So that's why it's affect the the properties, uh, the properties of the material is being affected when you have uh, the nano size of that particular uh, materials. So physical properties, example, uh, melting point of the substance. I mean, we continue that properties, uh, the melting pro uh, the physical properties. We continue, then we consider a good example of that of melting point. So let's suppose. Uh, we have the material at different scale. We have the bulk materials, that is material at the macro scale, and we have the material at the nano scale. So what we see, uh, if we say that the majority of the atoms are, what the majority of the atoms uh, uh, all on the inside of the object. If we say, if we have a substance, this is, this is the type of the substance, where we say that the majority of the atoms uh, or inside this object so what will happen uh, what will happen with the properties okay what will happen with the properties uh, if we say that we have an atoms in which the uh, the majority of the atoms are inside the substance and if we have a substance at the nano scale so what we see we see that uh, it's split between the inside and the surface of the object uh, but we say in this particular conditions uh, the majority of the atom they come uh, at the surface of the materials uh, at the surface of that particular substance so it's change, uh, changing an object size so what happened uh, if you have uh, this particular stance so we have a very small effect on the percentage of atom on the surface at this particular conditions at the bulk scale and micron scale we have a very small number of atom at the surface but here we say uh, we have a large number of the atom at the surface so a big effect on the percentage of atom at the surface large atom at the surface so it will be a back to a great extent because of the large amount of the atom at the surface so what happened to the melting point i mean uh, if you consider the material under these circumstances when we have 
the I mean the bulk materials and the other the nanoscale. So what happened to the melting point? So the melting point uh, it uh, doesn't depend on the size. In the case of bulk material, I mean a bulk is larger, it's out of the scale of nano. I mean it's anything greater than the nanoscale range, we can count that for bulk. So uh, and bulk. Uh, I mean it doesn't depend on the size whether you increase or decrease the size as long as you are in the bulk scale so uh, the property that the, the melting points remain the same but once you come in the nanoscale range that's from uh, below 100 nanometer so the melting point is lower for smaller particles uh, the more you reduce the size the more uh, I mean uh, it will be uh, I mean it will have a different melting point I mean changes uh, the melting point will change by the reduction of the size. So we have uh, uh, we have this concept of size dependent properties. So again, we have a question: uh, Why do property change? Why do the property change? So we have to answer these questions. Uh, so the short answer for that is scale changes everything. I Many we have the questions: Why do property changes? I mean, why do property change? So, the, the short answer is scale change uh, changes everything. So, how is that? In order to explain this, we have uh, there are numerous scale differences in our universe. I mean, we have from very big uh, that is, for example, from the, uh, the size and mass of the suns uh, to very small and the universe that is Planck's and uh, which has a value of 10 to the power of minus 34 joule second. I mean, uh, this the scale varies in the universe. So along with that scale, I mean, at different scales, we do we, uh, we can observe different forces uh, dominate. Uh, we are at the larger scale, so the larger scale, you know that uh, the forces uh, which are prayer, which are dominant, are different uh, than the scale. Uh, 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 that then then the forces that are prayed at a smaller scale or a smaller molecule. So what we have different methods, uh, different models better explain the phenomena. So we have a diagram here, but actually the uh, uh, that diagram, the resolution of that diagram was not uh, quite good looking. I mean it's, uh, it was not uh, observable, so that's why I remove that. So uh, we are saying that scale changes changes everything. I mean, it's the scale that changes everything. Uh, so what it means now we have to explain this particular thing and how uh, scale changes everything. So we have four important ways in which nanoscale materials may differ from the micro scale materials. What are they? Uh, the first we have uh, gravitational forces. Uh, become negligible and electromagnetic forces uh, dominate. I mean, it's when we come from bulk to nano. So the first answer, uh, the first example is, uh, uh, the first reason is uh, gravitational forces become negligible at the nano scale, and electromagnetic forces uh, it become dominant. The second, uh, quantum mechanics is the model used to describe the motions and energy instead of the classical mechanics model i mean classical mechanics fails to explain the behavior of the quanta the behavior of nanoscale object so here we have to utilize order to better understand the phenomena we have to introduce uh, the laws of quantum mechanics so quantum mechanics uh, laws are, are being uh, observable here at this particular uh, scale i mean classical physics no more i mean you cannot utilize the classical laws to understand the behavior of the nanomaterials. So, uh, a greater surface area to volume ratio, as we have mentioned earlier, uh, majority of the atom they are lying at the surface as compared to the volume. So, this also affects the properties or the behaviors of the nanomaterials. And uh, number four, we have random molecular motions have become more important. I mean, uh, unlike the bulk, I uh, say it's now not, not, not particular pattern of the molecule. The molecule it can move. Uh, randomly or you can call Brownian motion of the molecule. So these are the four uh, I mean basic reason uh, because of which we have uh, we, Because of which we say that nanomaterial they perform in a totally different ways uh, As compared to their bulk uh, counterpart. So let's explain each of them uh, in a bit detail 
So uh, the first we said the dominance of the electric magnetic forces. Uh, so what is that? Uh, because of the method of the nanoscale object, uh, I mean we say that the nanoscale object they have very small mass. Uh, so what actually happened? Uh, gravity become negligible. You people know that uh, gravity, uh, gravitational force is a function of mass and distance and it's weight between nano sized particles. I mean you people have studied in earlier classes that the gravitational force is proportions to the magnitude of the masses. So the larger masses you have, the stronger gravitational force uh, 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 will be there. But if we say that the masses are small, uh, and, nano uh, uh, and nanotechnology or nanomaterial, the size of the material is very small. So that's why we say that uh, just because of the smaller size of the nanomaterial, we say that at this particular scale, uh, the gravitational force uh, will be negligible. But uh, there is another force we call electromagnetic force. I mean, gravitational force is negligible. Why is a function of masses? The mass is small, so the gravitational force uh, will be smaller uh, until that we can ignore this force. But uh, if we come for, uh, if we count for the electromagnetic force, so electromagnetic force is a function of charge and distance and it's not affected by mass. I mean if you uh, study about the Coulomb law you say that force equal to kq1 q2 divided by r square so it depends upon the magnitude of the charges do not, do not depend upon the masses. So what if we have electro, uh, electromagnetic force is a function of charge and distance and it's not affected by the mass so it can be very strong. I mean we have the charges at a nano scale, we have the charges, uh, but we are not counting the mass here. So that's why we are saying that Coulomb law is a function of charges at a distance. So that's why we are saying that uh, electromagnetic force between the nano size objects very, very, uh, will be very, very strong as compared to uh, as compared to the gravitational force. Uh, uh, if let's suppose you compare. I mean the electromagnetic force and the Coulomb uh, electromagnetic uh, force and uh, the gravitational force uh, in the case of that material. So you will find that the electromagnetic force between the two protons is 36 times stronger, 10 raised to the power 36 times stronger than the gravitational force. I mean if you have a comparison between the two forces and you consider uh, the smaller scale object, uh, the smaller scale particle. Uh, there, uh, I mean, if you say these are the smaller scale particles, they are protons, and you calculate uh, first the electromagnetic force and then the gravitational force. So you will easily find that uh, the electromagnetic force is 36 times uh, larger uh, than that of uh, gravitational force. So that's why we are saying that at a smaller scale. Uh, the uh, electromagnetic force is more powerful. Electric force, uh, the strength of the electric, uh, electromagnetic force is very, 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 very high uh, as compared to that of uh, the gravitational force. Uh, you can say that uh, it is smaller scale. The gravitational force is negligible as compared to uh, the electromagnetic force. So quantum effect, uh, we already discussed that. The classical models that we use to understand the matter at the micro scale is breakdowns. Why is breakdown? I mean, we already mentioned breakdown because of the very small size of the object, uh, the very fast, uh, uh, the very fast movement of the small scale particles. That is, we are saying that uh, when the size of the particles, when the size of the material is reduced, so the moment. Uh, of that particles or their smaller, uh, smaller size particles uh, is also, I mean, they, they move very fast. How fast they can move with the, fear, with the, with the speed almost comparable uh, to that of the speed of light. So, uh, in order to understand their behavior, so we can utilize quantum mechanics. Why quantum mechanics? Because quantum mechanics better describe the phenomena uh, that classical physics cannot. Uh, the good example of that of uh, the color of the nano core. I mean, if you, if you apply the, the classical physics, that why the colors of the nano cores changes. So classical physics cannot give a good explanations. 
so uh, here we apply the quantum mechanics and quantum mechanics uh, uh, quantum mechanics uh, gives us the explanations for that that why the color changes uh, so uh, instead of uh, you know that uh, the quantum the quantum mechanics gave us uh, a very useful uh, I mean the uh, principle that of the probability that is we use the concept of probability instead of certainty up where an electron will be found I mean normally in a classical scale we are certain to talk about uh, a particular event but uh, in quantum mechanics since we say that the material is very small uh, so uh, we cannot say exactly and precisely that where a particle will be at particular locations uh, how much energy a particle will have at any particular instant of time so that's why we're talking about uh, in term of probability. You want to study more? So here are the uh, the resources. I mean, it's given uh, uh, at the bottom. You can see it here. Separate websites from where we have taken this lecture. I mean, the content of this course. Surface area to volume ratio. What it mean? It mean that uh, as object gets smaller, they have a much greater surface area to volume ratio. For example, you have these two cubes. So uh, the first cube, this smaller size cube, you can see it here. Uh, it's two centimeter cube, and it has a surface area of 24 centimeter square. I mean, this is a smaller scale, a smaller size cube. And we said that this cube uh, has a surface area. I mean, it's uh, one side is a uh, two centimeter. So it has a surface area equal to 24 centimeters square and if you calculate the volume of this cube so the volume is uh, volume is 8 centimeter cube so what is the ratio the ratio from surface to volume is equal to 3 ratio 1 I mean uh, here we have a ratio between surface and volume and that is up 3 and 1 if we consider a larger scale cube the larger scale cube how much long uh, how much larger is this one uh, we say this is larger cube 10 centimeter cube and has a surface area this is 10 centimeter cube so its surface area uh, is equal to uh, 600 centimeter square if you calculate the area of this larger cube so it has a surface area equal to uh, 600 centimeter square uh, and the volume if you calculate the volume so volume is equal to a uh, thousand centimeter cube so what's the ratio you calculate the ratio so ratio is equal to uh, 0 0.6 to 1 so now you compare the ratio uh, here the ratio is 0 0.6 to 1 and we have the ratio is 3 of 1 so that's why we are saying that with the reduction of size of the materials so the ratio uh, surface to volume ratio is increases and this significantly uh, we say that uh, a surface area to volume ratio increases so what actually we have we have a greater number of a substance uh, come in contact with the surrounding materials I mean if with uh, the atoms uh, with the reduction of size majority of the atom are at the surface so what actually it happened we say that a greater amount of a substance come in contact with the surrounding material so what uh, what happened uh, what we have as a result of that contact as a result of that contact we say that uh, I mean uh, we can have better catalysis uh, since a greater proportion of the material is exposed uh, for potential reaction I mean we have already explained uh, some of these phenomena in our previous lectures or intermolecular motion is again uh, very significant if we are dealing with a nanoscale material so uh, we, we say that we have tiny particles like dust and these particles they move randomly so uh, unlike that at the macro scale we barely see, uh, we barely see the moment or why it's new I mean so at the macro scale we, we, we are unable to observe this but at the nano scales the particle is moving widely uh, batted about by smaller particles I mean so, uh, in, uh, they, they move randomly uh, I mean you, you cannot predict directions I mean, from one instant it will move in one direction, and other uh, at other time it will move in, better, uh, in other directions. So there is an analogy, analogy or an example that uh, you have to imagine. You have a huge balloon, and how much huge that balloon is? Uh, that balloon has uh, 
a size of 10 meters and we say that this particular balloon is being batted about by the crowd and a stadium I mean you have a larger size balloon and that balloon is being batted by different people by uh, or by a crowd in a stadium and now uh, you imagine yourself being traveling an airplane you're moving in an airplane and you observe the balloon downward at, uh, at a stadium batted by a different people so what actually you observe you barely see moments are people hitting it I mean you are very far from that uh, you're moving in an aeroplane with a very high speed so I mean though it's a very high it's a very huge balloon and there are different people who are batting it out uh, they're batting that particular volume there is moment but you are unable to see it because why we are moving very fast and you are very far so close up you see the balloon moving wildly I mean, if you are at a smaller scale, I mean, you, you are closing to the balloon, so you will see that the balloon is moving uh, very fast, or balloon is uh, moving, I mean, you can observe the moments very closely. But unlike that, you are, uh, you are moving in a plane, so you will unable to observe that particular moment. So what does this all mean? So we say that the following factors are key for understanding the data scan. Uh, related properties uh, what are those uh, those uh, factors uh, so the first uh, as we have discussed domain of the electromagnetic forces importer of quantum mechanical models high surface area to volume ratio uh, random motion so it's important to understand these four factors if you want to fully understand the behavior of the nanoscale object so it's very important that you know about these four factors uh, when searching new material and properties I mean, whenever you're trying to design, uh, you, you're trying, you intending to make a new material with the substantial new properties. So you have to uh, focus. You have to have a good knowledge of these four factors. So, uh, what are those? I mean, we say that in nanoscales, when you reduce the size of the material from bulk to nano, <clears throat> so the nano materials you have, it has unique properties. So what are those unique properties? So here you see that in this table, we have the properties on the left and an example on the right. We say that the nanomaterial have unique properties. What are those unique properties? So the first property we consider is catalytic properties. Uh, I mean the nanomaterials has good catalytic properties because we say that due to large surface area to volume ratio, uh, material has better contact with the with the surrounding or with the outside environment so just because of that we have good catalytic properties so a good example of that is better catalytic efficiency through higher surface area to volume ratio and it's because of uh, the catalytic activity is because of surface to volume ratio so electrical uh, electrical properties so example of uh, electrical properties uh, if you have a nano materials so for that materials increase electrical conductivity uh, I mean that nanomaterial results and increase in the electrical conductivity and ceramics and magnetic nanocomposite so what we have we have increased electric resistance matters because of the nano size magnetic properties uh, so in case of magnetic properties we have increased magnetic corrosivity up to a certain grain size I mean so, uh, depend upon the size of the materials I mean below 20 nanometers uh, material have one kind of corrosivity but if you increase the size up to uh, 20 to 40 nanometer so you see that it will affect the corrosivity so that's why we say that increase magnetic corrosivity up to certain grain size and then we can observe super paramagnetic behavior as well that is if you reduce the small such that the size is comparable to the wavelength of the electron so the, the nano materials uh, it, it observe uh, the magnetic behaviors uh, that we call super paramagnetic behavior I mean we, we observe the curve that we will discuss later on uh, I mean just like we say for the ferro or uh, uh, ferry magnetic materials uh, we say we have a hysteresis curve uh, I mean in that we have a virgin curve but in, in the case of super paramagnetic that virgin curve 
I mean, we do not have the virgin curl. And we say that uh, in case of super paramagnetic, we do not have the cursivity as well. So the line, I mean, uh, we can discuss that in full detail in the coming slide. So mechanical, what happened to the mechanical properties? We say with the reduction of size, uh, when we move from bulk to nano, so the mechanical properties improve. So hardness improve, improve hardness and toughness of the metal and alloys, and along with that, it's also increase the ductility and superplasticity of the ceramic. Uh, optical properties. So for optical property, the spectral shifts of the optical absorptions and uh, fluorescence properties increases. Uh, as a result, we have increased quantum. <coughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> So we have optical uh, spectral shape of optical absorptions and fluorescent properties. So it's increased quad efficiency of the semiconductor crystal. Uh, sterical, so sterical increase selectivity, hollow sphere for specific drug trans transportations and uh, control release. Uh, uh, similarly, you can you can consider the biological properties. So uh, for the biological properties, we have increased permeability through biological barriers that is membranes, blood, uh, blood brains, uh, barrier, etc. That, that is, you can have improved biocompatibility. Uh, the tables uh, that we, we take from sources, uh, VDI, uh, teaser, I mean, it's the source that you want to learn more about that. You just have to Google about this and you'll find these resources. So characterizing nanomaterials, how you characterize different kind of nanomaterials. So you have uh, uh, this ball-like structures and this uh, ball-like structures, we say that we have nanoparticulate materials and that nanoparticulate material, we have nanocapsules, ultrafine aerosol, uh, quantum dot, nanoparticles and uh, nanotube. So uh, nanocapsules, the origins, uh, originally that can be found in nature. Uh, uh, you intentionally release, uh, I mean, manufactures all in new, etc. So, you talk about the quantum, uh, quantum doubt. So, we say it has chemical for compositions. Uh, these quantum dyes can be metals, uh, metal oxide, polymers, carbon, semiconductors, biomolecules, and compound, etc. Uh, again, you can find that in aggregate states. Uh, the aggregate state sometimes when you find a quantum dot we say that it's mostly like uh, something we call artificial atoms so in most of the cases we say that something like we say uh, single particles but uh, along with that it can be aggregates and uh, agglomerates uh, nanoparticles nanotubes uh, so mostly we say that these are the material has been uh, used for cell process modifications so uh, what can we have? We have untreated as obtained in the pro uh, production process. Uh, coated, for example, uh, can you get polymer films, uh, core shell particles, for example, we have spare capsule. I mean, th th this is the, uh, I mean, the place that how and where we can found these materials, whether we can make artificially or where we can found it uh, in nature. Uh, so, uh, Again, uh, nanoparticle shape structures. I mean, uh, it can be in the form of spears, uh, uh, maybe in the form of needles, uh, platelets, and maybe in the form of tubes. I mean, it's, it's, uh, the good example is, uh, I mean, the uh, experimental analysis, uh, you will find more details uh, when you yourself will come and research. Uh, ultrafine aerosol, and the dispersion in the gases, for example, aerosols you have. Uh, liquid, for example, gels, uh, fluids, and solid, for example, matrix materials. I mean, it's a different it's an example of the different nanomaterials uh, we have in nature. Uh, we are trying to synthesize that in the laboratory. So, what are the particular application of the nanotechnology? So, nanotechnology has applications in almost all the field up uh, uh, in almost every field of uh, modern living uh, for example we can have application of nanotechnology in auto automotive industry that is we can utilize that for light fit constructions we can utilize that for painting filler base coat clear coating we can utilize that in automobile uh, industry for catalyst person 
we can uh, utilize that as a fillers for tires, uh, sensors, uh, coating for a wind screen and car bodies, etc. Uh, in ele electronic industry, uh, in electronic industry, you can uh, utilize nano materials for uh, data memory, for example, uh, MRAM, GMR, HD uh, display, OLED or uh, FED uh, display. You can utilize this for laser diode. Uh, you can use it in glass fiber, optical switches, uh, filters, conductor, uh, uh, conductor, anti, uh, anti static, anti static coating. So if you are uh, uh, you're you're a person working in chemical industry, so in chemical industry, uh, nanomaterials or nanotechnology has application as pillar for paint system, coating system based on the nano composite. Uh, we have. Uh, Impregnations of papers, uh, are switchable adhesives. Uh, we have magnetic pivot. Uh, and if you are working in the construction industry, so in constructions, nanomaterial can be utilized uh, for thermal insulations, uh, flame retardant, uh, surface functionalized uh, building materials, barwood floors, doors, uh, figures, tiles, roof tiles, etc. And you can also utilize it as uh, packet coatings, uh, uh, cruise motors. And if you are an engineer or you're working in engineering department, so nanomaterial can be used as uh, wear protections for the tool and machines. That is anti-blocking coatings or uh, create resistance coating on plastic part, etc. And you can also utilize, I mean, as, as a lubricant, uh, pre-bearing, uh, lubricant, bearing I mean you can utilize for that purpose particularly the data particles can be used uh, in uh, that particular application so if you're a person working at a field of balisons so you should know about that here we can utilize a nano material for a drug delivery system uh, we can utilize that as active agent as a contrast medium medical rapid test uh, uh, processes and implant we can use that NK microbial agents and coating. Uh, I mean, we have different material, different nanoparticles like titanium oxide, or dope titanium oxide, or uh, zinc oxide, or dope zinc oxide. I mean, we can use it for different antimicrobial applications. Uh, agent and cancer therapy, like we have boron nitride, nanotube, nano or nano sheet. So we say that we can be used as an agent and cancer therapy. Uh, it can be used hypothermia, or it can be used in boron neutron capture therapy. So more application of nanotechnology is that we can utilize it in textile. Uh, a textile or fabrics is non-woven. So, so a surface uh, process textile, textile is a good example. Similarly, we have smart clothes. Uh, I mean, so smart clothes we can obtain or we can make uh, by using uh, uh, nano size material, nanoscale materials. Uh, similarly, you can also uh, utilize nanomaterial and pools and drinks. Uh, we have packaged materials uh, that uh, I means we can utilize, we can save the material, we can store it, uh, live sensors, uh, additives, and we can utilize uh, nanomaterials as clarification of fruit and juices. So, uh, in the field of energy, uh, we can utilize nanomaterials and fuel cells. Uh, solar cell, I mean, that can perform better as compared to their bulk counterpart. Uh, we can utilize that in batteries, that battery that can last longer as compared to uh, the usual batteries available. We can uh, utilize that in capacitor. So the nano capacitor or batteries, solar cell and fuels, it can have much better performance than that we made from the bulk materials. How uh, household materials uh, that uh, that can be ceramic coating for iron, uh, uh, orders catalyst, uh, cleaner for glasses, ceramic floors, windows, and cosmetics. So in cosmetics, we can utilize, uh, we can make the, uh, such a cosmetics which can be used for sun protections. Uh, we can have uh, lipsticks. Uh, I mean, uh, lipstick is not only, I mean, the look you can find, we can also find the protections for your skins. Uh, so we can have a skin, uh, skin creams as well and that we can also have toothpaste. I mean that toothpaste it normally can give you much more cleaning due to the increased surface area to volume ratio. Uh, similarly, you can have uh, nanomaterial in sports and outdoors. 
your sky waxes uh, anti fogging up glasses uh, that you can say that Google is so anti falling coatings uh, for ships are bought a uh, reinforced tennis racket and balls I mean these are some of the uh, applications of the uh, nanotechnology are we said the nanomaterials I mean you're interested in more you can find again if you given the source you can find more and more with the help of the uh, the given sources I mean these are some of the brief application which we have for uh, the nanotechnology or nanomaterials and more detail we can have in the coming lecture so it's an uh, it's an